He's well seasoned. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I am not. <laughs> He's well seasoned in the gospel. And he came in and said, and all the years that I've been preaching, 30 some, 40 some, 50 some, how long he's been preaching, he came and he said, only twice have I preached the message of repentance. There's something about the repentance message that automatically turns people off. Uh huh. There's something about hearing get right or get left. And by left, I mean when Jesus comes back, he won't be left. Well. That the church don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'm trying. I'm going to get out your way. Amen. But when I came over and I told you, I asked God, I said, God, what is the word that you want me to give? And God said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right. Yes. Yes. And I can show you where I was at. I came in and I brought my study things and I put them right here and I went and I got the oil. And I anointed myself. I uh, anointed my ears. They feel like I'm here from God. I anointed myself and I came back over and I started playing a little music and I was just in fellowship and just with God in my own, my own place. And I said, oh God. <laughs> so I talk to him, don't judge me. I don't know what you want to say. <laughs> and I don't know about the other ministers in here because we, of course, have the very seasoned, and then we have the still seasoning group. <laughs> but I, I didn't feel like I had it yet. And so I said, God, what do you want me to, to give to the church? And God said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I fell on my face. And started repenting. See, because when the word of God comes forth, he has no respected person. So before I ever gave the word out, I searched my own house. I fell on my face and I said, God, clean me up. Yes. Yes. See, now some of you are thinking, how do you see a minister? What's she repenting for? That's what's wrong with the church now. Amen. Because we get so high-minded and so religious. Talk to Kia. Okay. Let me help you with something. There are two types of sin. Somebody say two. two. There are two types of sin. There are sins of omission and sins of commission. There are two different things, but both sin. Sin of omission, sin of commission. You got that? Yeah. Everybody say omission. omission. Commission. Omission. omission. Commission. Wow. This don't mess the church up. Because I love when people come to their church and they praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Beyond blessed. Highly favored, Isha, Tambaya, all that. And they think because they can do all that, that there's no sin in the camp. Lies. Would you right. say that again? They, they think that <laughs> they can do all that, that there's no sin in the camp. But when you start to look at sin and you break it down, you see the two categories sins of omission and sins of commission. Sins of omission are the sins that hit the church. The sins of omission are the sins that hit the saint, the preacher, the deacon, the prophet, the mother. Sins of omission hit the church. Because omission is you knowing that good thing that you should do and you do not. Mm. What you mean? When the last time you cracked open your Bible? Mm. When I said turn to Matthew chapter 3? Now I'm sorry, this morning during morning service. It's a sin of omission because you know that you're required to do it, yet you don't. Another sin of omission, prayer. You know that you should pray, but you don't. See, but we think because I'm in the church and because I'm on an usher board and because I'm singing a choir and I ain't sleeping with nobody right now and I've got my text and ministry under control. Somebody caught that right now. <laughs> Because I got my house in order, there's no sin in the camp. But I came to tell you that God says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's it's not a good. message that I want to preach. Because I want, when you're up here, it's so much different than when you're down there. And sometimes without you even knowing it, 
the faces that you shoot me are like daggers. So I'm up here trying to bomb and weave and dodge your ugly face and still get over and still get a word. It's only ugly because you're not smiling. That's all. Sins of omission. God is saying to the house. The church is not just comprised of the saint. The church is comprised of the sinner and the saint. So when the word comes forth, it's not for one group. It's for everybody in the house. Say it. Sins of omission. What is that good thing that you know God wants you doing that you do not? you lazy. Oh you God. won't get up out your bed and pray for 15 minutes before you say, that hit me. That hit me. So I'm going to say, God, I think the Lord Jesus out to bed tomorrow and my alarm clock earlier. You going home. You finish with your day. You heard it. Like first lady said, God, I thank you for nothing. Jesus, you so often thank you. Jesus, I'm going You trying to hurry up and get your prayer in before your head in the pillow. Omission. Or you not doing it at all. If you're not doing it right, or you're not doing it at all, that's a sin of omission, and God is not pleased. Wow. Time to reach her. Yeah, and this is one of them kind of messages. See, listen, every time I preach, it's like a surprise party. I don't know who's going to be here. So if you're here, you can either take something from it or not. Got nothing to do with me, but I can't be disobedient. I didn't want to give it because I knew it wasn't one of them kind of messages. But I got be obedient. I'm telling you that God is saying, repent. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to talk about it. See, because my dad used to say, everybody want to go to heaven. But nobody want to die. die. Come on. And I found that there's a difference in that saying nowadays. <clears throat> everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to live right. Well, you going to do what you want to do according to the book of Janelle, according to the book of Crispin, according to the book of Nakia. I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm just going to march up in heaven anyhow. The devil is a lie. God is saying, repent. And if I say it 5,000 times tonight, I can keep, repent. Because that's what I came to say. God is telling us that it's time out for the patty cake church. It's time out for coming and looking the part and you all messed up on the inside. Come on in here. There's a house in Akron. Schumacher homes. They build model houses. They build houses. Beautiful homes. And every time I'm going up to Cleveland or going up to Akron, I always see this one house that stands out to me. It's like eight of them in a row. But it's a very one on the end. And it always is my eye. That brick, cute little shutters, the porch. Oh, that's my house. Every time I see it, something inside me just gets excited about old people in the past. Like, it's so bad that I know the mile marker where the house is, like it's my real house. Yeah, it's all made to third. Right, okay. So I'm really excited about this house. Now, last time I went up to Ohio, I stayed with my friend Joe and Tammy. And Tammy, she loves these houses as well. She's been a couple times. So she said, oh, come on, we got to go, we got to go. Let me take you, let me take you. So we're like, okay, yeah, we're going to go look at the houses. So we, we ain't judged our time, right? So we only had like this much time to go look at houses. So I couldn't go through all of them. So naturally, I was going to pick which one? Your favorite. My house, duh. So I said, let's go straight to the end. Let's go to my house. And walk in and the excitement is building on. Because I've been looking at this house for years. Years. Like, man, that house is beautiful. Man, I love to live in that house. I bet it got like 90 barrels. It's huge. Like, so I'm all in my mind about this house. And we go in the house and I'm like, and then walk back out. Come back in. Yeah. When I walk, <laughs> the true story, I walk into the house and I don't know exactly what I was expecting, but when I walk into the house, it's nothing like what I was expecting. It's dated, it's old wallpaper up, the carpet looks, it's the model house. How are you selling this and it look like this? The carpet is like matted, pressed down. 
Y'all can't shampoo this. The fixtures, but everything is just like this. Everything on the inside of the house was a mess. But the outside of the house looked amazing. Come on. Come on. Come on. So when people drive by and they see the house, mm -hmm. they say, man, I want that house. Man, I got to be like that. Man, I want But the inside of the house is what matters. Uh -huh. See, because if in fact I were going up there with my checkbook for them to build that house for me, I'm not looking just at the outside. I want the inside of the home. That's where I live. Right. Come on. And they're like, oh, but you can customize it any way you want to. Yes, and that's true. But see, when I stepped through the door, I was immediately turned off. Mm -hmm. I don't even want that house no more. Well, Jesus. I know that house. We want that house. <laughs> because it's how many of us, God is looking down. See, I see your outline. But God is looking down. On your inside. And the time that you can smile at me and say, Praise the Lord, but you can go out these doors, my God. God sees all, He knows all. But these aren't the type of messages that we want to hear. But I'm confused, Bishop, because when I was lost, had somebody not told me this message, how was I going to get down? We need this message so that you don't got to be lost no more. Amen. How selfish would I be knowing and having all this knowledge and understanding about God and I never took a moment to share it with somebody else. Omission. You know to do better and you're not. Mm -hmm. And God is not pleased. Come on, come on. God is not winking at your sin. God is not saying, okay, all right, that's fine. Mm -mm. God is saying, repent. Mm -hmm. Sins of commission. That's when you willingly commit a sin. You know, girl, I don't know. He takes me. Come on, son. What you doing? <laughs> I'm like, Nothing. He like Netflix and chill. <laughs> question, question. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> but then you mad when Netflix and chill has you at the altar crying. God forgive me. Well, Jesus. <laughs> help the people. For those who don't know what Netflix and chill is, it's a new movement. In the, in, the, in the young culture, it, it's just a pop culture thing. Where instead of us going out on a date, out in the night, out in the fellowship of others, you come over to my house, or I'm gonna come over to your house, we gonna watch Netflix, and we gonna chill. Mm -hmm. I have yet to successfully master the art of Netflix and chill. If the purpose is just solely to watch a movie and chill, I ain't never did it. I'm too transparent, Truth. Let me hear that. Sin of commission. It's when you know that it's wrong. You know that it's sin. And you do it anyway. We always talk about the fornicator. But let me tell you, the gossiper. Mm -hmm. It's sin. Every time something happens, you have to, child, did you hear about a week ago? You trolling on Facebook looking for something to talk about. Preach, girl. Did she posted that? <laughs> sin. Because we don't want to call sin, sin, so we can do what we want to do to feel better. But God is saying, repent. I told him that wasn't one of the now messages. He's saying, repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when I hear that, I automatically interpret that to mean like it's close, you know, it's coming, God is coming back. But I love the way one Bible scholar put it. He said, repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do this. But do this. How close it is. The kingdom of heaven is that close. Time for 
for us to pack up and go is that close. A hand led the way, and you still playing church. A hand led the way, and you still pretending to be saved. I told y'all before, I'm not, I, listen, if I'm going, I'm going first class. To hell that is. Well, I'm not coming up in here with y'all saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm not doing none of that. If I'm, going, I'm not going from no pulpit, I'm not going from the pew, I'm not going from the church at all. So when you come in, I don't know what the enemy has convinced you, but you're not giving brownie points. Uh-uh. Talk on. about it. God is crying out to the church saying, repent mm-hmm. for the kingdom of God is at hand. Listen. I tell you what, all day long, I've been crying for faith, I'm crying in Sunday school, crying in children's church. I just couldn't get it together. This emotion, Lord Jesus, help me. I wanted to be sober tonight because I wanted to deliver the message so that the church could understand that I'm not talking from a place of emotion. I'm talking from what thus saith the Lord. God is saying that now is the time for the church to repent. We don't want to hear repent. That's fine, then you be mad. I can't afford another day of Russian roulette. I can't afford another day of pity patents. I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. You, it's not double dutch. You in or you out. God is saying to the church, repent. You playing a part. You look the part. You sweet as pie. But on the inside, you dead. And God is saying, Get it right. You may not have tomorrow. You may not have three weeks from now. You may not have five years from now. So sins of omission and sins of commission, we got to start reeling that in. God is saying, get it right. Who is going to get it right? Because we don't like to open confess. We don't like to talk to Christians. We don't like to really be held accountable. Matt said, you going through something, you call your friend, girl, I'm struggling. Girl, me too. Because you don't really want to be accountable. Because you don't really want to be delivered. You don't really want to be healed. But I'm telling you tonight that God is telling the church it's time to repent. He's waiting. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do anything. But he's saying, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Thinking I'm done. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You've been coming. And coming. And coming. And leaving the same. Every week. You wake up. You put your mask on. And you press your way. But on the inside. On the inside. On the inside. I'm telling you. Not just from a pedestal, I'm telling you, I fell on my face and I said, God, search me. Somebody's got to make it. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go and I want to see the holes in his hand that was put there for me. Uh-huh. I want to go and I want to marvel at the pure side. See, because he did not
If there were 